I wanted to go over something that I've seen said quite a lot. And if you're interested in buying a high-end knife, especially a Shun, I think that you've probably been a little bit apprehensive because of it. Um, it seems that for some reason Shuns get this a lot more than other brands of knives. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's because they use a little bit harder steel than most other knife companies. But at the end of the day, it's, it's something that I think even myself a long time ago before I really looked into it, I was sort of worried about it too. And this is what it is. If you've been looking at reviews of Shuns, like all of the other high-end knife manufacturers, 99% of the reviews are positive, but 1% of the reviews are something along these lines. I just spent money on Shuns. I bought a great, amazing set of knives. I liked them a lot. I don't know what happened, but one day I looked at my knife and all of a sudden there were chips in the blade. So I contacted them and I said, you guys obviously have problems with your knives. I'd like a new set. And they said it was my fault and I used them wrong and that they won't be replacing them for free. And I am angry and I am disgusted and I can't believe that they did that to me. Thank God for the return policy of the store that I purchased it from. I'm never buying a set of shoes again. I'm angry and irritated. I'll have you guys all know that I am actually an amazing chef and my husband or my wife or my son or my daughter or my eight cats love the lasagna and the ravioli I make so I know it wasn't my fault it's their fault they use really poor quality materials and I'm never buying another one again one out of five stars would not recommend so when you see reviews like those whether it's on Amazon or someone's blog or on the actual you know cutlery website you definitely get a little bit worried and you wonder should I be buying these knives or not? Should I get a set of Shun? Should I get a set of Wushtoff? Should I get a set of Globals? It seems like people are having problems. So I'm here to tell you, as a third party expert who has nothing to do with any of these companies personally and just likes knives and spending money on them, I'm letting you know that Shun is 100% right and that person, all of those people, did cause damage to the knives themselves and it was user error and if I was in the position of those people and I sent my knife into Shun and they said no, I'd be irritated and I'd be angry, but I would 100% understand. And here's why. Let's start with a background of the metal that's used to make Shuns and used to make other high-end knives, especially Japanese knives, and why Japanese knives like Shun are so uh, prone to getting little chips. Shuns use a very, very hard set of metals. They use either VG10, which is like the gold standard for knives, like I've said, or they use another type of metal called SG2. And these are like the two top tier metals out there. VG10 is like the Porsche of metals, and uh, SG2 is, let's say, the Ferrari of metals. They're both high-end. SG2 is like crazy high-end. VG10 is pretty darn high-end and most people would love to have VG10 in their garage. Makes sense? Solid. The reason they're so sought after for knives, especially Japanese knives, is because they're crazy, crazy, crazy hard. And what I mean by that is I believe that VG10 is 61 and SG2 is something like 63, something along those lines. Um, so they're very, very hard and that means they're extremely resilient to uh, getting worn down as you use them. So this is what that means. When you're cutting, the actual act of cutting, by definition, you're pressing the blade down into things, right? Pressing it down, pressing it down, pressing it down. And just through cutting, eventually, this blade is hitting this, hitting this, and it's gonna slowly start bending a little bit, right? Very, very slowly. That's just how it works. The harder the metal is, the less likely it is to bend because you have a very soft material, very hard material, and the very hard material sort of overpowers the very soft material, and that's how it works. Now, a lot of people, when they're upgrading from knives, they don't gradually upgrade. They go from having like a $20 set of knives that they bought at Ross or something that's made of really, really cheap, really, really weak steel, and then they upgrade to a set like this, and they're shocked and disgusted that the other set was so much more resilient. It's not that it's more resilient, it's that it's much, much softer. And it's just a matter of physics. You need to dissipate the energy you're putting into the knife somehow. And if you can't bend it, something else needs to happen. You can't just make the energy disappear into the world just because. 
or disappear somewhere just because. So when you're using this knife and you're cutting, what happens is essentially it's so hard that it's wedging through the wood much more effectively than a softer knife would. That's why it ends up being so sharp. That's why it ends up keeping its uh, edge so much longer than any other knife would. If you abuse it, if you do stupid things with your knife, if you throw it into the sink, throw it into the dishwasher, if you use it to, t to cut like this, like so many people like doing because they think it looks really cool. If you do stupid things with your knife, if you abuse it, you're dumping all this energy into a very, very thin, very, very tiny edge, and it can't bend because it's very, very hard. So what happens is that energy works its way into chipping the material. It just sort of breaks off little pieces. And in the same way that if you get a random cutlery set from Ross, one of those 36 pieces for like 20 bucks sets at Ross, you can literally grab the knife and hold it and you can literally just bend the knife in half and it'll form a little U-shape because that's how soft the material is. If you try to do this with this knife, I mean, first of all, you would shred your hand on the blade. But second of all, if you didn't do that magically, you would literally just snap the blade straight in half. And that's because it's very, very hard, which makes it more brittle because it's two competing things than a very, very soft and less brittle, more malleable metal. Just like how you can take a piece of gold and just bend it and there you go. Or you can hammer a piece of gold into a little wafer sheet. It's the same situation as this. It's very hard. It can't be bended into things. It can't be morphed around. So when people abuse them, it's not just that it becomes less dull and they end up complaining about a stupid dull knife. It's that the knife literally just starts breaking pieces off. If you use knives properly, if you follow best practices, if you have an end grain or a wood cutting board, if you don't throw them in the dishwasher, you don't throw them in the sink, you don't use them to cut through frozen chicken breasts and other weird stuff that you shouldn't be doing with knives anyway, you're not going to have a problem with either a Shun or a Wushtoff or a Global or whatever brand of knife you're looking to get. So just keep that in your mind. Remember the knife's job is only one job. It's to cut things. It's not to pry open jars. It's not to throw into your wall. It's not to use to cut open a frozen piece of chicken breast. It's to cut things that are not frozen, that are not made of metal. It's not to pick your teeth. None of those things. So use the knife for the purpose that it was made for and you're never gonna have any problems whatsoever. And next time you see a review of someone complaining and talking about how great of a chef they are and how they know how to use knives and it's Shun's fault or it's Wushtoff's fault, just smile to yourself and know that it's actually their fault and they're just crazy. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, let me know. If you're one of the people that broke your Shun knife and you want to yell at me and tell me that I'm wrong about it, I mean, feel free to do that too. I'm, I'm more than happy to have a discussion about it. But otherwise, I've, I've explained to you guys literally the physics behind why knives chip and exactly why it happens and why having a harder steel as long as you're actually willing to be proficient with the knife and willing to be deliberate in your cuts is actually phenomenal then you know there you go so i will leave some links down below and if you have any questions comments or concerns like i said let me know otherwise i'll talk to you very soon